There are many parts of Starfield that can feel daunting during the first dozen hours of the game. From the map to outpost creation, the loot and of course spaceships and ship building. In this video I want to show you that creating the right early game ship will make life a hell of a lot easier. With that said, here is the best all-in-one spaceship for early game Starfield. For some, shipbuilding can be a difficult task, especially when starting from scratch, but if you are looking for a ship that can pretty much fulfil all of your needs, then this can be the best place to start. And so, let's cut right to it. Here is the ship that has everything I need to get a majority of my space needs accomplished. As of recording this, I'm level 17, and this ship, which I've named Stingray, has everything I need. Now the first thing you're probably thinking is blimey that is a big early game ship and to be honest you'd be right but at the same time every component on the ship is useful and serves a purpose. I should mention that your early game ship doesn't need to look like this but hopefully I can provide you with a flavour of the key elements of this ship that makes it have that jack of all trades capability. All of these parts are super easy to come by, in fact 90% probably more of these parts can all be purchased from the shipyard supervisor on New Atlantis, that's the first shipyard you land in on the planet of Jemison. The remaining parts and free ship slot actually come from the first full mission with the Crimson Fleet. This mission is called Echoes of the Past and a good few of you might have already done it. Without spoiling the story, the quest conclusion gives you the option to leave the area via a United Colonies prison transport, which you can keep for yourself. The ship is actually pretty crap, but it does provide us with a lovely front docker as well as this ship cockpit amongst some other things which I'll go into in a moment. It will also give you the option, once you get back to the shipbuilder, to use a slightly different aesthetic for what is available from New Atlantis for the Habs, which are the rooms of the ship essentially. And if you need help beginning the Crimson Fleet faction quest, then I do have a quick handy guide to help you with that. There should be a card in the corner of your screen right about now. If you click on that, it will send you right to a handy little guide to getting to that mission. The main reason why this ship is so versatile is that you can do a lot of activities from on board the ship. And this starts with the Habs, as I mentioned. The Habs are the actual rooms that you and your crew will be living in. And so, as you can see, I've created this nifty U-shape to accommodate all of your needs. Starting under the cockpit, where you'll be entering the ship from the loading bay, we have a standard companionway, which acts as a great branching off point for the more practical rooms. Off to the right, we have a 2x1 workshop, which houses three different workbenches, industrial, spacesuit, and weapon. This means that between quests and planet hopping, you don't need to visit your outpost or major settlement to upgrade your equipment. By using the Hopetech manufacturer from the prison transport, I was able to save money by retrofitting what was a brig into this workshop. Further down the starboard side, I have fitted another 2x1, but this time an all-in-one berth, which primary function allows me to add two passenger slots and acts as a place to speak with companions and build their affinity towards me. We can also get those companion quests by having this space, although you can do it in any which way you like, but it's just a nice little uh, character building place. Continuing around to the front centre of the ship, we have our second companionway fitted with that front docker from the prison transport, more money saved. And this also opens out to the science lab, which features two more essential workbenches, pharmaceutical and research. With this combination of hubs, we can theoretically build anything on board our ship, provided we have the skills and resources. In true Bethesda fashion, the science lab should lead through to the armory to complete the loop, but we can still access it from the other side. This is a great place to put your rarest items on display and have easier access to them rather than trawling through lists of items. The final room is the cockpit, which was recycled from the prison transport. Purely for the aesthetic, I've placed this at the back so I can actually watch my weapons firing out the window. I think that looks really cool. Plus, if I put it at the front of the ship, it might look a little bit like a duck. 
Moving now onto the external components of the Stingray, I'll highlight for you the exact items that are being used. Remember, you could use all of these exact parts for your own ship and it could look completely different. Going from front to back, we have the Hope 11 Docker from the Prison Transport with the 220CB landing gears on either side. Between the two spines of the ship, we have two Caravel V103 cargo holds, providing almost 400 space of cargo each. Similarly, to ensure that this ship can accommodate all of your early game looting, there are some additional Caravel V102 cargo holds along the long edges of the ship. Just in front of these are two 300 gram Helium-3 fuel tanks, so you can grab jump through plenty of systems. Towards the back of the ship, we can see the rear of the Hope 4 landing bay recycled from that prison transport. To its left, we are using the Redline R2000 Alpha Grav Drive, which fortunately has just enough oomph in it for this rather heavy A-Class ship to perform a grab jump. Of course, the lighter your ship, the further you can jump. So if you do want to jump further, you might have to forego some cargo capacity, perhaps. For the reactor, we are using the most powerful reactor available at A-Class from New Atlantis, and this is the Dogstar 134mm toroidal reactor, which generates 20 power, which is exactly enough power for us to power these bad boys. Oh, I love this ship, it's so good. You can use whatever weapon systems you like, but I am specking my character into being able to fire missile barrages to decimate enemy ships. Here's some gameplay. Enemies grab drive out of commission. Go. There we go, I got you now. Turn quicker than me, but you ain't got my firepower. Oh, this, this, this is so good. For the shield, we have another hefty A-class module, the Marduk 1010A shield generator from the Prectora systems. By the way, the missiles are called the CE-09 missile launcher. They're basically the standard missile launchers from Ballistic Solutions, but they still pack a punch if you did watch that gameplay. As for propulsion, we have two Ares DT-10 engines with the Hope SS landing gears also at the rear from the prison transport. And that is pretty much it. These are some of the best early game components that I've found for your ship that you can immediately get from New Atlantis or from the first main mission with the Crimson Fleet via the Echoes of the Past quest. If you enjoyed this or found it helpful, then leaving a like helps me out a load. And if you want to see more videos like this from me, then subscribing is the best way to make sure that you don't miss a future video. Thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you in the next one.